Basically, when you're duck hunting, you're ambushing everything. You're, you're, you're hidden, you're concealed, you work them around, and you try to get them down in front of you, and they're basically ambushed. Well, to me, when it comes to shooting, it all depends on where you're at in the blind. Oh, I kill, I kill my share, okay? I'll just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> to me, in my opinion, the guys on the ends should be real good shots. The best shooter is usually on the end until they get their limit, and then they're done at that station, and the rest of them fill in. If the wind is blowing, you know, left to right, the ducks are gonna come in right to left, and you're the point man, then I realize I want a pattern that's wide. I'm gonna be the lead man, I'm gonna get the first shot, and I want something that I can move quickly. Usually the ambush from start to finish is no more than two to two and a half seconds long. Well, if you say cut them, by the time you get up and your gun is on your shoulder, it's 1,000, it's at least a half a second that you've lost once you're looking at them and saying cut them. So if you want to do it right, you've got to say cut them and start up before they get at the prime kill zone. You're gonna to have to start a half a second earlier. Now, if I'm the man on the end who gets the last shots, my barrel is gonna get longer, my choke is gonna get tighter, and my leads are gonna be way more than they would if I was the point man. I come from behind them swinging, okay? I swing through them and pull the trigger. I generally make sure I get my lead right on the first duck. So you're calculating how far he is, how fast he's flying, and whether you're on the level that he is, and you pull the trigger. Most people who miss ducks, no doubt about it, shoot behind them. We figured that out from hunting up in a tall tree one time. We could see where our pattern was going, and when we missed, we always noticed it was behind the duck, never in front of him. So if you're missing, for the most part, you're shooting behind them. The second shot and the third shot, to me, is always just instinct. How many times do you see a person, they'll shoot and miss, and then before you can even blink, they've already shot again and folded him. We have to time it so that there's a grazing type fire. The guns are coming like this, grazing fire. As I bear down on that first shot, I make sure that I'm on them. And then the second and third shot is all instinct. It's the way you're going to present your pattern to the, your target. That sounded pretty sophisticated, didn't it? You know, for years, duck hunters, they buy a new shotgun, they put the chokes in their guns, and then they try to shoot steel through it, and it won't kill anything. So you have to buy an external choke that'll keep the steel tighter. We use kicks. I think they're the best. It's improved, modified, full, and extra full. Depending on where you're hunting, okay, and what type body of water you're hunting. If I'm shooting little ducks, I tend to like the improved cylinder or the modified. If I'm shooting big ducks, I'm shooting full choke and extra full. With a full choke or an extra full choke, if you raise up like Jace did last year and you blow a teal's head off at 30 yards, Okay, hey, Jason's pattern ain't that big around at 30 yards. We like to shoot number threes. I know the majority of people, probably if you asked them, they'd say twos, but we've shot them all, and it seemed like just the number threes and three inch for what we do. When we could shoot lead, lead is such a killing metal going through ducks that you wanted to get it wide as possible. I mean, the wider the better. The shorter the barrel, the wider the pattern. But still tends to be real quick out of the gate and then it just loses its luster. And so I think we have to catch up with technology and go with longer barrels, tighter chokes.